they're very easy fish. Don't let anybody else fool you. Zebra plecos are not hard fish to keep. Zebra plecos are very easy fish to keep. They're very easy fish to feed. They're very, 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 very easy fish to take care of. And honest, in all honesty, they are one of the most easiest fish to breed. Today's video is about how to zebra pleco. So this video is going to be uh, basically care and maintenance of zebra plecos. Um, what to look for when you're buying a zebra pleco. Um, how to look for signs of health as well as discomfort um, and how to spot issues and uh, basic care, uh, temperature data, um, feeding, what to feed them, what type of food they eat and all that good stuff. Now uh, there will be a separate video made on zebra pleco breeding as well as fry raising so stay tuned for that video and if you haven't subscribed subscribe down below so you get updated when that video gets uploaded and hit that notification icon so you get notified when I upload that video um, as well as other videos of similar nature um, <clears throat> so without further ado let's get to this video this is gonna be uh, somewhat of a lengthy video I assume because I want to cover all the basic details but I'm gonna try to keep it as precise and uh, contained as possible within a short amount of time so please watch till the end uh, and you can see some beautiful footage of all the zebra plecos I have as well as the super white zebra pleco I have in this tank um, as well as all of his siblings and uh, all the, the entire group uh, so stay tuned as always thank you so much and subscribe down below and hit that notification icon <coughs> for further updates let's get to the video how to zebra pleco so let's look at um, what signs you have to look for to identify if your fish is uh, healthy or not to start. I have here some of the fish. These are all different species of loricarians uh, that have died in my care over the last, you know, little while. Um, most of these are high pancestors. This bag contains some zebra plecos. So we'll look at those to, because I'm not going to actually catch any of the fish that I have in my tanks to, to, to show any of these. But I will use these um, preserved specimens to show you guys uh, some of the features to look for um, when you are picking up new fish. Uh, this can be used for almost all types of high ancestors. Uh, so this video is basically gonna say talk about zebra plecos, but this information is general to almost all types of high ancestors, which is what the type of uh, general family the zebra plecos fall into. It's a type of high ancestors. Uh, so therefore, any other high ancestors you get, you can actually apply this information to. Uh, so let's look at this bag here, which has um, <clears throat> a few zebra plecos that have passed away. Some of these are fried um, at different stages of growth. I will put B-roll footage of this close up. Um, so all these fry here have died from different types of uh, um, issues. Some, some are from malnutrition. Some are from internal blockages and some are just not eating. Like this guy here, he was a few weeks old, he didn't eat and he just didn't make it. So whatever. Uh, this fish here is a fish I ordered recently actually uh, in the summertime. He was one of the fish I purchased uh, in uh, 2019 summer. So this guy, uh, I will put a close up of him uh, so you can see. Uh, he died in shippings. I bought 15. Uh, he was one of the 15. He did not make it more than 24 hours in my tank uh, the other 14 are doing really well uh, I have added them to my main group which is behind me my main grow out group uh, so they are part of my new group of breeders that are being conditioned or that are being grown out to breed for 2021 um, and uh, this was one of the fish that came in with that uh, 15 fish that I purchased in the summertime and he did not make it through shipping but I am going to use him for uh, illustration purposes because he is a healthier specimen so you can see um, well this guy after being preserved he did lose some of the coloration but what you want to look for is a dark fish so this fish if you were to see a fish in a tank that had lighter coloration that the black markings are not as dark um, you, you don't see as defined markings uh, the eyes are sunken in like this guy here. These eyes were sunken in because of the drying process, but when I got him, he was still fine. But if you see sunken eyes, that's definitely a sign that the fish is not doing well. Uh, one of the main things to look for is also underneath the belly. So if you can see underneath here, this guy, even though it has been dried up, it has a pretty solid belly. 
Um, the belly is pretty uh, straight. It's not concaved in. Uh, that's something to look for. If the belly is concaved inwards, that is a sign of um, malnutrition or internal parasites. So you can see this sub-adult or this juvenile here, the belly was sunken in. This guy died from a parasitic infection. Um, I would assume either that or some type of blockage. So I will put some close-ups of that sunken belly compared to this one here. So you can see right there, the sunken belly is, is much more pronou pro uh, pronounced on, on this fish here, the smaller one, whereas the larger fish that is healthier does not have a sunken belly. The larger fish in my right hand possibly died from a shipping mishap, uh, either from the water being bad or I would assume it got hurt through the shipping process. So um, this the type of things do happen, but it's very rare. Um, so this is all the fish that I have lost in the last probably 24, 12 to 24 months uh, as far as zebra placos are concerned. I don't really, I try really hard not to lose any fish because these guys are worth two, three hundred dollars a piece. Um, this guy uh, was quite expensive and he died. Um, so like, and these were fish um, that I could sell for more money than they grew up. So then those are all very substantial losses so I can't afford to lose fish uh, which are quite expensive so that's why um, I do everything I can to make sure that um, that I don't lose any fish um, also I preserved any dead fish since 2019 for scientific research so if any scientists are doing research I can send you these for research purposes for genetic analysis and whatnot I can also pay for the shipping myself I also have other hype ancestors so please comment below and let me know that you are interested uh, in getting some of these fish for scientific research um, and I'm sorry I'm running a little short on breath so please bear with me uh, I really just want to get this out of the way and uh, because I am just sitting at home and I want to get something done while I'm here so I am going to make these videos so thank you so much for uh, enduring this with me um, so let's look at some of the other features to look for since uh, we are still looking at some of these guys here um, this is an L471 female that passed away recently from a breeding injury. These are quite common in Placos. Um, you can definitely see that she had a lot of uh, damage on her back here. This is from the male um, trapping her and, and it, was a, it was an unfortunate scenario. I still have eight of these left. Um, but uh, and this does not happen that often. It's just like a very rare scenario. But it does happen. So if you are keeping Placos, something to keep an eye out for is aggression especially juvenile fish or young adults that are just getting into sexual maturity without proper uh, understanding of what they're supposed to do they could potentially hurt some of your young females uh, that are not ready to mate yet uh, so that's something to keep an eye out for um, so let's look at something else uh, that a lot of people don't seem to realize zebra placos and a lot of uh, hype ancestors are carnivores. so this is a really good example um, this is a L340 Mega Clown Placo. She passed away in a similar sin incident where the male um, tried to mate with her and attacked her. So you can see all the, the damage that has been done to her back there. Um, but what I really wanted to do to, was to show you guys the, the melt structure which is right here. So you can clearly see this animal is designed to eat very small food. This is almost a sub-adult, uh, almost an adult size um she was about that big like you know she had a nice long tail probably about there and then also the drying process compacts them a little bit but um this female um even though at this size you can see the melt structure very clearly it's not designed to eat um algae it's very different from um uh other animals other placos that are designed to eat algae and vegetables it's almost like a beak you can see like see i can put my um I'm going to get more close-ups of this, but you can clearly see that this animal is designed not to eat algae. It's designed to chew little bits of meat and, and any other thing. So it's a, definitely a carnivorous animal. Uh, they do, like the 340s definitely eat a bit more vegetable content. But all, all of my hype ancestors, including my zebra placos, definitely enjoy their meat. Uh, they, I feed mine a very high-protein diet. Um, uh, supplemented by with um, green materials so 
let's look at some of the foods um, that you can feed your zebra playgirls. So once you have them in your in your possession and you've gone through quarantine, or even while you're going through quarantine, you want to feed your fish a very high quality diet that is specially designed for your zebra playgirls. Uh, there's a video that I have highlighting all the different fish foods that I feed all my fish. Uh, I highly recommend you check that out. I'll put a link to that at the end of this video as well as down below in the description. Uh, so please check that out to, to, to look at all the different foods that I feed my zebra playcos. And uh, I'll just go over them really quickly. But what I do want to recommend is a high quality food like this Evo uh, food brand that is designed for high ancestors. This is not a paid advertisement. I buy this food myself. I highly, highly, highly recommend this brand of food because all of my zebra playcos love this type of food. Ebo Aquaristic, great food for all your high ancestors. I really like that stuff. Um, I also feed Dr. Basileers. This is something new that I've been feeding all my zebra playcos. They all seem to like it, especially the fry. All my high ancestors grow out. Love this stuff. So really recommend this stuff. Um, also, uh, another Evo product that I feed quite regularly, Evo Aquaristic Plankton Tabs. I'm not a huge fan of this, but my fish really like this, so this is a really good food. Um, also, I do feed a bit of this stuff. Um, this has wood chips in it and a little bit more green content and has spirulina. But I do feed this like every two to three weeks very uh, as, a, as a means of flushing their gut. Uh, guts out and just also to just give them a break from all the proteins and just to make monitor their health uh, to, to give them optimal health also I feed them uh, Nutrifin bug bites uh, by Fluol or Nutrifin and this is a Canadian product I feed them this stuff once every two to three weeks as well I also feed um, this new life spectrum algae max wafers probably once a month uh, I am supposed to be feeding this algae gel. Uh, this I have been using for my fry. I did not highlight this in the last video because I couldn't find this container. But I have been using this for growing out zebra plecko fry. So if you cannot find any higher end food than this, you can use this New Life Spectrum Algae Max or Algae Gel uh, and, and feed it to your zebra plecko fries and grow them with considerable success. Uh, what I feed my fry right now is this stuff right here. Um, so actually I'm only feeding the natural spirulina paste. Uh, but I do have the Youngster Grow, which I do use, uh, plan to use when I have smaller fry. So I'll, uh, these are, well this hasn't been opened, but I have to open this anyways. But I will show you what this stuff looks like. Um, so it's like a Play-Doh. This is what I actually feed once a day. Um, I actually made that ball because yesterday the ball was too big and uh, inside it's just like this has been open for a, or a month I've been feeding out of this and I barely have used it. It's really really good a small amount goes a really long way You don't need to put a lot of this stuff. Um, just put little bits uh, I can actually put some b-roll of me feeding this uh, fry box uh, Zebra Plenko fry with this stuff so you can see how it looks in there as well as how much how I feed them This is what I showed you in there is more than more than what I need for these fry for the day So I might even break that in half and put like only half of that also I I put other food uh, I don't just predominantly feed this I this is my um, Main food and I add like little bits of like other things like crumbles of uh, uh, Tetra tropical color granule little uh, bits crumbles of that crumbles of uh, uh, Nutrifin, uh, bug bites, uh, color enhancing. Uh, I also feed Dr. Basilier's um, nano bio fish food uh, for the fry, as well as a regular one. Um, I don't really feed them any of the Sarah Wells chips or any of the other um, green products. All the foods I feed my fry are 50% protein or higher, or at least 45 and higher when it comes to like the the commercial. Uh, brands like Tetra. I don't feed those as the main food. They're just little bits of additives I throw in the tank mostly to feed the shrimp and the, the snails and stuff in there And uh, if the fry end up eating bits of that, that's great. I just want to have a variety of food for them um, What else do I feed the fry actually uh, what I have been feeding in the past that have been quite successful with is uh, Spirulina just spirulina tablets. Um, I don't actually oh, yeah, I do have it right there uh, so this stuff right here uh, it's great. Um, so 
and break it up you know i break a little bit again you don't need a lot uh, especially if you have a couple of fries zebra plecos only spawn like five six fry so a box of like five fry would get like three little crumbles like this a day they, it becomes little piles of green mush and they just go and sit on it and eat it as much as they want and then biofilm grows on it and they eat the biofilm it's great for them it's amazing this stuff and it lasts a very long time in the tank without going bad like this stuff could last like about 24 hours before it starts going growing biofilm so the fry eat it may, way before that so that's a really good stuff um, so that's the food I mean uh, aside from that I don't really have much more to add go check out the video about feeding uh, that will highlight all these foods as well as a few other brands and all the different types of food I, I go through for them and uh, how often and all that uh, I feed them so that's the food part I'm actually gonna give you some of the information that uh, planetcatfish.com has listed for zebra plecos this is a very good resource uh, check it out um, they have pictures uh, different views you can look at what to look for in a fish uh, just uh, has a lot of pictures of healthy fish spawning and all that so please check out that information I'm gonna read you some of the information uh, that are, that is listed on this website uh, because I find that this is uh, really good information that they have on this fish on their website so catalog data sheet high ancestors zebra L46 zebra pleco L098 zebra pleco imperial pleco imperial zebra uh, and uh, there's a few other names that these fish go by okay um, and uh, basically the L48 oh, sorry the L46 and the L98 are exactly the same fish the only difference is that the L L98s have somewhat of broken lines throughout the body instead of straight solid lines uh, but they are both collected from the same place they are um, scientifically thought to be exactly the same fish just different coloration of lines I actually do have some fish that are borderline L98 uh, when an L98 is a little bit more pricey than L46 but some of these fish in here do have some characteristics of L98 I will show you some of those in B-roll so you can see that they are actually identically the same fish um, and, and a lot of sports colorations are are not different morphs they're just just the, the each individual fish is a little different so that's why you will have uh, some fish that have those sports colorations uh, and that's why L98 is a little bit more scarce than the L46 is because the sports colorations are sports colorations that's why they're considered a sports color uh, so here entomology a contraction a contraction of the Greek hypo meaning less than and ancestors an allusion to the reduced number of teeth particularly in the lower jaw found in this genus zebra from African black and white striped equine so basically it's, it's, that's what is named after I'm not gonna read all the information the size 80 millimeters or 3.1 inches standard length I have seen pictures of fish that are a little bit bigger uh, the biggest one I think I've seen a picture of was 4.5 inches but it did have some characteristics that showed that it might be a hybrid of another hype ancestress um, so therefore it might not be a pure hype ancestor zebra the largest hype ancestor zebra I personally seen is about 3.5 inches uh, or a little bit less and it was males and most females I've seen are under 3 inches long um, most females top out at about 2.5 inches and most males top out at about 3 inches or a little bit less so it's a very small pleco, okay? Uh, it's very easy to identify. Uh, I will put the link of this website up here somewhere so you can actually go check them out as well. Uh, and I'm not gonna read all the identification marks. Sexing, the first pectoral fin rays of the male is somewhat thicker than that of the female. Males in breeding conditions further develop their spines like odontids on this ray. The, males ha the male has a slightly broader head than the female best observed from above so these are some of the signs that you can use to distinguish between males and females I will also put a picture that you can see to dis define these signs these uh, characteristics that are defined very clearly in the picture uh, so you can use that for identification purposes uh, general remarks I'm not gonna read you all that distribution Rio single Brazil Amazon lower Amazon single lower single 
um, pH 6 to 7.5. I have found in my personal experience with all high fat saturates, they breed in higher pH of 7, uh, 7 or 7.5. They do not care about the pH or the particular TDS of the tank. I have not kept them in TDS above 200 parts per million. So I have not personally experienced that myself, but I have read reports of other people that have bred them in almost alkaline water, which is higher pH than 7 or 7.5 and uh, very high total dissolved solid content. And they don't seem to have any issues with breeding in uh, harder water. My water here is at about 180 parts per million and the pH is at about 7.4 to 7.5. I keep all my high pancestors and my discus in those parameters and even some caradina shrimp and I don't seem to have any issues. Everybody's breeding fine. Uh, there is no problems with anything um, except the discus. I do like to bring the TDS in their tanks a little bit lower with RO or like filtered water just to bring the TDS to close to 100 parts per million. Just when they're spawning, if I am trying to get larger spawns, because uh, the the fry survival rate, the egg survival rate in discus are affected by the TDS of the water. But for zebra plecos, it does not seem to matter. Uh, all my high ancestors, all my uh, even pecoltias, any other high uh, plecos I breed, don't seem to care about the relative pH or the TDS. So that's something to consider. Um, Temperature it says here 26 degrees to 30 degrees Celsius 78.8 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's an ideal range. I keep between 78 and 86 um, Anywhere between 78.8 and 86 degrees seems to be okay um, But a little bit warmer side would be better uh, Simply because they like warmer warmer water. So 82 83 degrees would be ideal um other parameters, the water chemistry of the Rio Singo is well documented, but it is not that important as H zebra seems to do well in just about any water provided. It is highly oxygenated. Uh, content and is warm. pH and DH do not seem to matter since the fish has been spawned in all types of water, even water that was hard al and alkaline. The best re to best replicate their na natural habitat, the water would be neutral to slightly acidic and soft. So, um, again, if you are capable of bringing the pH down to about 7.0 or a little bit lower than that, by all means do that. But it is not necessary, um, especially if you're not trying to breed them. Um, they should be fine in your tap water as long as your tap water is relatively clean from ammonia and other, other problems. Just dechlorinate, uh, you know, all that stuff that you're supposed to do. But aside from that, I don't, they're very easy fish. Thank you so much for watching the video this far. This is part one and part two of this video will come out very shortly. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe down below and hit that notification icon so you get updated when that video gets uploaded as well as many other videos of this nature. Uh, so on part two, we will cover all the details about why your fish might not be spawning, um, how many fish to have, uh, the different furniture requirements, uh, flow rates, temperature data, whatnot, and uh, basic information on like how to get your fish to spawn and uh, you know many reasons why people have a difficulty getting their fish to spawn. Uh, so we'll address all that on part two. So please stay tuned and uh, subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you guys on that video. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys are all awesome for subscribing and uh, please share this with all your friends and uh, all your networks because that really will help them out as well as the channel. As always, I thank you for your support. I'll see you on the next video. God bless.